What's up everybody? Welcome back to Simple C10. As you can see, we got that KP component step notch in. We've got the frame painted up and now we're ready to put the rear end back in there. I've got the bags ready to bolt up. Man, we're making progress on this thing. We're getting excited about it. So follow along as we make more progress. Last episode, you saw us put in that KP component step notch. We painted up the frame. It is ready now for the KP components Watts link. Also the VelaWorks do-it-yourself rear slam kit. We're gonna talk all about that and how to do it yourself. We're gonna talk about the airslamit.com air ride kit that I use on all of my builds. I'm gonna do an unboxing of that. So a lot of information, making some more progress on the truck. Super excited, it's 70 degrees outside today. Feels wonderful. That alone puts a smile on my face. So, hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment, follow us along as we continue to make progress on Black Dice. Hey, shout out to VelaWorks for sending us this rear do-it-yourself slam kit. This is part of their DTC series, and it's an all-do-it-yourself kit. So you've heard me talk about four-inch blocks before. Well, I get those from VelaWorks. They'll send you the U-bolts that you need, the four-inch blocks that you need for the back, and all the hardware that you need to make that possible. So on all my builds, I use these four inch blocks in the back because I want to keep my factory trailing arms and I want to be able to mount my bags to the factory position in the truck. So this allows you to do it if you're on 22s. And if you right now use the code SIMPLEC10, you'll get 10% off of your purchase. So if you're on 22s, you can use these four inch blocks to get about an inch from laying out in the rear. And that allows you to keep your factory trailing arms. If you're on any wheel smaller than 22s, then you're gonna need to use a smaller block. If you're on 20s, use a three inch block. And if you're on anything smaller than 20s, I'd recommend a two inch block. Hey, since we're talking about VelaWorks, let me go ahead and show you their front do-it-yourself slam kit as well. They've got your top bag brackets. As you can see their new DTC logo there, looks cool. The good thing about these is they have these adjustable bag bracket holes. So if that bag needs to go left or right, those are gonna help a ton, comes with all the hardware. And also they have these drop pockets. And these new drop pockets, the DTC series, you can use this emblem as your drain port in those. So no more water is gonna just sit in these. You can use that on the inside of your bag. What I like about these bags being separate, you can weld in your cup. It's easier to get your hand around welding this in and then welding in the bottom pocket on it. So these both come with the front do-it-yourself drop kit with all the hardware and everything you need to put these cups in and slam the front of your truck. slamit.com simple c10 kit is what i call it because it's the same thing that i order for all my builds it is an airlift 3p air management system with a five gallon tank two compressors all the fittings the air bags two 2500 bags two 2600 bags everything that you need in one kit <music> This is the Air Max five gallon seamless tank. So this thing has multiple ports on here. It's got a drain port. It's got two larger ports here in the front. Usually what I do is I have the compressors hooking up to the side here. Then I will plug one hole and I'll have the other hole going to my Airlift three piece system with a water trap in between there. And then on the back side, these can be plugged as well. So all you should need are the two for the compressor and then the one going to your airlift manifold. Now, if you're not running an airlift manifold and you've got a ton of other 
fittings, then you're gonna have to use all those other holes. But again, that's why I like to use the Airlift 3P system is because it's so simple. If you have manual valves on this thing, you're gonna have eight valves trying to come out of this thing to run your four bags. So keep it simple. Go with the Airlift 3P system. It's plug and play, super easy. Here's the tank, looks great. Easily painted, I've painted a few of these. It comes with, comes with these brackets that slide on and then bolt in. That's how I did no association. So these are good, good tanks. Those are aluminum tanks, by the way. This is the second compressor harness for Airlift 3P system. So if you're running two compressors with the Airlift 3P, you'll want to get that other compressor harness. That'll run all the way from the Airlift 3P system all the way to the battery. We have two 2600 bags. These go in the front. And we've got two 2500 bags that go in the back. Now you can put any bags in the back that you want. You'll want these 2600 in the front so it takes less pressure to raise your front up. And in the back where it's a lot lighter, these 2500s will give you just as much lift as the other ones and use less air. So that's what I like to use on those. This kit comes with all the different fittings that you're gonna need from the bags to the tank. It comes with the compressor isolators which these hook up to the compressor and these will keep the vibration of the compressors down so it's not super loud as they fill up your tanks. It has all the bag mounting hardware that's gonna mount the bags to the frame. Phoebe, would you like to explain some of the hardware here to these folks? I think that's a no. but you can see looks very much like a Vire, works the same. I've had Vire before and they look very, very similar. Um, I've ran these three different times on trucks and I've never had a problem out of them. This kit does come with two compressors. I'm not gonna take the other one out of the box. It looks exactly like that one. There's all the airline, the fittings. This is everything for Airlift 3P system. So that Airlift 3P system comes with the lines, all the fittings that you're going to need. And here's the greatest thing about the kit. We have Airlift 3P system. So let's look at this kit. This kit has great instructions with it. I've went over those in some of my past videos. Comes with the remote. The system will also hook up to Bluetooth to your phone. So you can mount this to a stationary position like I did in No Association and then use your phone to be sitting at a car show, hitting your switches, sitting down away from the truck. It's pretty cool. So two different ways to control this. And there's the brains to the whole operation right here. Looks so good. And this is so simple to install. One of these goes to the tank. You send one line to each bag and then there's one exhaust port and that's it. So when you hook this up and you run the electrical to your battery and to the compressors, then you just run your air line, plug it in here and you're ready to roll. One of the most simple systems that I've ever used. I'll use these in every single ride that I build. Great quality, super easy install, good price point. Ain't that right, Phoebe? Phoebe agrees. All right, so part of the plan today is to get these bags mounted up here to the frame and then also get our four inch block mounted to the trailing arm. We're gonna bolt up the rear end, get all that tidied up, hopefully get the Watts link installed 
and then have this rear section almost done. We've still got to weld in the bridge on top of the notches here. We'll do that very soon as well. So, hey, keep making progress with us. This is fun. If you have any questions, post those in the comments. I love to answer questions to the best of my ability. I don't know all the answers, but I'll try to figure them out for you. I just wanted to thank you for your support. All the products that I talk about in these videos, the links are in the description. And again, any of this stuff from VeloWorks, if you use the code SIMPLEC10, you'll get 10% off. Um, I don't get anything from that. That is specifically all the savings that goes to you. And just a special thank you to VeloWorks again for sending us these parts and being a part of this build. So we're getting ready to install this bag directly to the frame, but first we need to put in our fitting. We're gonna use some, some of this red Loctite. This stuff is great to cut down on your leaks. Um, I don't like to use plumber's tape. This stuff works awesome. So I'm gonna put a little of that, just a little bit around the seal here, tighten this down and get that bag bolted to the frame. installed the VeloWorks rear do-it-yourself slam kit from their DTC series here and all this is you've got a four inch block that goes in between your rear end and your trailing arm. We're going to go ahead and put the U-bolt that comes provided and all the hardware and then we're going to just hand tighten all this down first and then we're going to adjust this block where we need it and then whenever we go to weld in the bridge we're just gonna weld this in on both sides to keep this block from moving left to right. So get everything bolted down, get it where you need it, weld these blocks into place, and that's it. And the reason we use that block is because since we're not gonna install a four link in this truck, this block is gonna allow the rear end to move up into the notch further, the same way that a four link would but with using our factory trailing arm. So you can only use this four inch block if you've got 22s, because as you can see, if you had 15s here and you had this block, if you had a flat, then this trailing arm is gonna drag the ground before the wheel does. You don't want that. But if you have 22s, your rim is gonna come lower than where that block is. So if you've got, again, if you've got wheels that are smaller than 22s, use a smaller block. You can order those in different sizes. Just contact VeloWorks and they'll cut those to the sizes that you need. This is a four inch block. This is a lot of the times what people use with transport wheels to get these trucks to lay out even with the front. So that's how you do it, super easy and we'll move on to the other side. Something I told you to hold on to are these factory shock brackets. So what we're gonna do is invert those. We're gonna make it where the shock bolts to the outside hole like this. That way we can mount our shocks to the outside of the notch. So we need to clean these up a little bit, paint those, and then bolt them into the U-bolt. shock bracket all painted up and this is what I was talking about originally this bracket goes on the driver's side that puts the shock on the inside we're gonna flip that to the passenger side and we're gonna mount it up just like that right there and that'll put the shock on the outside and then we'll mount the shock to the side of the frame So we 
got the blocks bolted up with the shock mount. Now we just need to take our long bolt and bolt in the bag through the bottom of the frame here. We're getting ready to weld in this bridge. We've got some, is this? Inch and a half. What's the thickness? Do you remember? 3 sixteenths, we'll just say everything's 3 sixteenths. So we're getting, whoa, we got a kitty alert over there. Hey, shop manager, we're trying to get work done. You've been on us all day. Hey, we're getting ready to weld this notch. Hey, we're getting ready to weld this bridge in here. So we've got some inch and a half by 3 sixteenths round tubing, and I'm just gonna grind down the knots where we've uh, painted it up, and then I'm gonna hold these in place while Zach does some welding. We'll get these in there, we'll paint them up, and then we'll continue on putting in that KP Components Watts link in the back. <laughs> 